Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. You know what? Because there was a big request for the first one, or, or from the first one, uh, Drinky Poos was my favorite. Of course, I'm sure y'all already know that. But uh, I got that whole saying from one man. Guess what? I brought him here today, or actually, he, he drove. But anyway, this is my good buddy, JD, Hi. Mr. Jordan. How are you? The reason I brought him on is, once again, not only did he coin the whole, you know, term. But I did not coin Drinky Poo. That was not me. That that goes back to, I believe, ancient... Rome. Uh, Rome, Rome or Egypt? No, I think it was the Mesopotamians. Mesopotamians. Probably. Drinky Poo. We do what we can. Yeah, Pre-English. <laughs> so... The reason that I brought him on is this man is a kind of carnivore. A carnivore of whiskey. Yes. So um, that being said, I feel as though this would be the man to give us some more in, uh, insight on the drinks that we all enjoy. Uh, but he brought some special ones that I've never tasted before, and I wanted him to let us in on what he has brought today. Yes. I brought the Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, the 2017 release and this one which i have not had is the woodford reserve bottled and bond 375 milliliter get a load of that folks which can't be purchased anywhere but the distillery i believe so those of you who've been to the woodford distillery don't think that's amazing simply because you don't have to uh you know prove yourself in combat or pay a billion dollars to get in. You just have to go there. Anyway, this is good stuff. Both of these ought to be good. Well, actually, I can't speak to the bottle and bond, but, you know, I'm guaranteeing, I'm guaranteeing it's not gonna taste like guano. <laughs> guano. <laughs> It'll be not a problem. Guano. The uh, birthday bourbon is tried and true. It's loved by a lot of collectors. This one here. Yep. It does vary year to year. I've had several of the years. Old Forester is a very old uh, whiskey brand. Not the oldest. You know how they all do that thing where they say this is the oldest in this way or that way, and they like the cowboy thing or the prohibition thing, or they all use that shtick. I mean, it's all got to go back to something, I yeah. guess. But it's been around a while, and they have a really, really beautiful distillery downtown uh, Louisville in a little brownstone. They char their barrels there. A little conveyor belt. Lots of fire. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. If you're not learning anything from this podcast, you aren't paying attention. Or you've probably been drinking before us. <laughs> but what Like we're, us. <laughs> what we're going to do, uh, what, just to just a go... It's a precursor of the verbiage I'm looking for. We, we're not sponsored by anybody. I'm not sponsored no, by anybody. No. Uh, we're drinking Modelo of our own volition. No one forced us to do it. We're going to drink these because we want to. Nobody's forcing us to. I mean, there's that guy. He's He's got a gun. But other than that, <laughs> I mean, he's not good accuracy. So I don't feel that forced to drink this whiskey by him, you know. Oh, um, not a gun. He's not there. He's no guy. Like I said, Jordan's actually the first dude that I've had on the, uh, on the, the shows that I do here on YouTube, but I coined the new name, the Macho Brochach Show. Macho Brochach Show. Say that one time fast. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that many of you are kind of like, well, get, let, get on with it, right? Well, here's I'm not in a hurry. Are you in a hurry? I'm in no this hurry. This is going to be delicious. It's my beautiful friends behind the camera. Bye, guys. Let's go with the first one. Um, what would you uh, I think, suggest? I think that we, since it's already open, let's have the bottle and bond. As far as porridge, uh, not like what you, not, not like. We need a soup spoon. <laughs> yep, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what would you, how would you go ahead, man? I mean, okay, I, let's pour it up. If you, don't, if you don't mind. The delicious birthday bourbon, it's a 12 year, each edition, each year is a 12 year. This is a 2017, like I said. Uh, it's got this cute, cute bottle. Yes. You know? yes. Uh, let's give it a little splish here. A little splish. We're not going to go too heavy. We're not in a hurry. We're not trying to destroy our lives, which can be done. One sip. 
Uh, let's go. Alright, so what you've had this before, yep, obviously. I have. So but but it'll be a new moment again in a sense because I haven't had specifically the 17 in a while. And um, it might be kind of fun to uh, just try it. I could have brought uh, maybe a, another one too. Maybe we could do that. So we can compare years of the birthday bourbon sometime too. You 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 could, you said you did or you did not bring it. Did not. Just okay. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Dude. Um, so what are we going to be looking for since you've had this? What would you compare this to, if anything at all? Um, there aren't a lot of twelve-year bourbons out there. There are some. But we're not looking to compare. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna give it a little nose with our mouth open. That's what they tell us to do. Okay. Mouth open when you nose it. And then we're gonna talk about maybe some flavors that we sniff in there. And then once we've discussed and discovered and uncovered architecturally, no. What's the, what was it, Indiana Jones? Uh. <laughs> Han Solo. Correct. <laughs> he was professionally Han Solo. Um, so we're gonna just we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dig it up. We're gonna dig up some flavors. See, figure out what we can taste, see what we like, and then we're gonna taste it. Switch it around, and we're gonna taste it a second time. Because the first time we tasted, this is my thing, and probably other people's too. But the first time you sip a whiskey, if you haven't had any other whiskey that evening, it's a little bit of punch in the face. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you gotta season yourself a smidge. And get ready for sip number two, where I think where the magic happens. I can dig it. We all love where the magic happens. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so that all being said, uh, I'll go ahead and just grab them first here. Yeah. We're gonna give it a little nose. Okay. With your mouth open. Ooh. Okay. He did give me instructions, folks. So remember that. All right. Yeah. So barrels. You get the barrel. It's I got barely, Well, that's the thing about the 12 year. Age means something. The age statement means something, but it doesn't mean everything. Because there's too long. You can steep your tea for too long. You've got to take that tea bag out at some point. And there's a point at which it's too late, in my opinion. But since, since bourbon is aged in a brand new cask every time, it is the most flavor and color that can be extracted from the barrel. It happens in the bourbon aging. So eventually, it is going to be too much, potentially, because it already got so much right out of the gate, so much flavor and color. But you're right, it's very barely. It smells a little bit like a library, <laughs> doesn't it? Do y'all know what those are? Do you, have y'all ever been to a library? If you have, comment below. Or See, no one's going to comment, dude. Let me tell you what. The libraries are where the books are, where the guys got the knowledge to make this stuff, man. I believe it's knowledge. K knowledge. So let's just jump to it, man. How, and just, let's just take a sip. sip. Let's have a little sippy poop. Boom, sir. <laughs> so sip number one. We're gonna clear out the cobwebs so we can have, <laughs> you know, a softer sip number two. But what do you get? Can I get number? Can I get number? You want to go number two right away? Oh wait, wait, wait. oh oh, no wait. Let's see. We'll see if it changes from one sip to the next. Okay, fair enough. Is there a science behind that? No idea. But on uh, the second one, tell it's me what smooth, it's smoother. Definitely, because you're a little bit seasoned. You're an older man now. <laughs> I'm way different than I was 15 seconds ago. I know. Definitely older. So, and I apologize, we got from this one, correct? This is Old Forester? Yep, old, okay. old Forester. Yeah. Gotcha. But Old Forester, and um, what would you, what would we like to do next with this particular drink? Uh, besides finish it? <laughs> I, f I feel like what you said at the beginning on the nose is that it's very barrel -y. You do get a lot of that oak. And the oak can more often than not be kind of separated into other characteristics. A lot of times it's caramels, it's sugars, and uh, and vanillas. Vanillas. You get vanilla. You're gonna you're gonna have your own opinion and everything once once but, you taste this. But that's mine. I did taste the vanilla too, so it makes yeah. sense. And a little ginger. You get a little ginger. I love my redheads. Yeah. Yes, I do. 
This one is, I think it was like stirred <laughs> with a, by an Irish person. Uh, You're Irish. Irish and French. I'm Irish and Dutch. Okay, so we sipped this, it was delicious. You know, I get a little sawdust, like a, like a wood mill. I, uh, it's got a, definitely a more bite to it, you know what I'm saying? Like as far as the bite, uh, like you said, the kick in the teeth is immediate. Yep. The second one is a more smooth. Like a, like toasted bread, that's gonna, that You're sound, gonna that sliding sound is uh, intense. Toasted bread, let me get rid of this. So, when we're tasting whiskey, something I like to do, and I learned this, I didn't invent it. I learned it uh, at a whiskey tasting event. They were teaching us how to taste whiskey. And a lot of times what they do is they'll just splash some water. Water is very important when we're drinking booze anyway, right? Stay hydrated. And you splash some water in your glass. <sighs> Knock it back, be refreshed. And you'll notice you have drips left in your glass. Yes. That's what we pour our whiskey onto. Okay. The A few drips of water opens up the aromas and the flavors. And I'm told, this is what they tell me, um, works with the oils in the whiskey to make the bouquet flower. Just kind of bring all the nose out, bring the flavors out, make it so you can taste everything that's intended in the whiskey uh, to be tended. But that's a really good idea. So are you suggesting we go times two with the Forester or not? <laughs> is that what you're saying? I don't get out of that stuff. Anyway, okay. So this is the Pisse de la Resistance. Yeah, I don't know, it's German. <sighs> That's German for French words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is our, once again, our good stuff here. Bottle and Bond, the, the Woodford Reserve. Bottle and Bond, which I have not tasted before. So this is actually a higher proof than the birthday bourbon. The birthday bourbon is 95.4 proof deliciously and the Woodford Reserve bottled and bond is 100 proof so this is actually a higher alcohol but if you look at them side by side you can see a distinctively stronger color here more rosy more amber more red and that is because it was a 12-year aged bourbon. All the color comes from the barrel. So longer time in a barrel equals more color and more barrel flavor. Okay. So this is going to be aged not as long. And it doesn't say, usually if it doesn't say, it's going to be eight years or less. Okay. There's no rule on telling you how long it's aged. And oftentimes it's not going to be one aged period of time. It'll be a different barrels aged at different periods of time. Technically, if it's under two years, they have to tell you. But this not telling you, meaning it's gonna be between two and eight years, roughly. See, I didn't know that either. Once again, under two years. So you're supposed to, how do you know that? What, what is your background? Uh, dance. <laughs> 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 what, what, what would you what would you say just so the audience knows what do you, okay so I have I have uh, acquired the small amount of whiskey knowledge that I've acquired came from photography shooting in the whiskey industry shooting a lot of events and, and participating in a lot of whiskey events um, and being around people who are experts drinking a lot of whiskey myself with the intention of understanding what's going on with it and that got to the point when I was a, an ambassador in a part-time capacity, a contracted level ambassador, and I would do tastings and trainings on different cruise ships for a particular whiskey brand that I won't mention. But, uh, but I worked for them for a while, and now I am a whiskey and spirits uh, person at a company that sells. I'm just keep the Fair just keep the branding out of it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so let's drink a little bit of this bottle and bomb. You interested? I'm absolutely interested, right. sir. Let's uh
So since he hasn't uh, drank this before, this is going to be a new experience. Very for excited about everybody. that. Everybody. Very excited about that. So we get to share something new. He and I have been friends since 2011. Dude, that's 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Right. That's the real. That's this is real stuff right yeah. here, man. Yeah. All right. So bottle and bond. Woodford Reserve Bottled and Bond, which I've yet to try. Let's give it a sniff. A will give a waft. So this one definitely, it's, it doesn't have a bite. This one is more smooth in my opinion. I can already just tell it's gonna be more smooth than that other one. There are distinctively fruitier flavors on the nose. Less Stringent. I would say bottle of the 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 old Forester birthday bourbon is pretty intense. Stings the nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not just the alcohol. I mean, this is actually higher proof. This is hundred proof, and the birthday bourbon is ninety five point two. What did I say? Ninety five point two. I missed that, man. My bad. But so it's five percent higher alcohol on the birth on the uh, bottle and bond, and it just smells. Like marshmallows. <laughs> so a lot of sugar content, yeah? Well, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Like toasted marshmallows. Yeah. That's yeah. really pleasant. All right, well, shall we? Yeah. By the way, actually, I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm glad he waited, so here we go. <laughs> Man, that's delicious. And a little bit of almond. You get the marshmallows and the almond. I have not had that on a, in, in a bourbon before. I've had banana bread and all sorts of wackiness that was distinctive flavors, but this is really pleasant. That is interesting, man. Yeah. And I sincerely mean it. Uh, this says new charred American white oak. You can do anything you want to a whiskey within reason. But if you don't use new charred American white oak, it won't be a bourbon. Fair enough. And there are other rules too. Bourbon's very strict. Very <laughs> strict. Oh. What did you get on that flavor? Did you get the uh, the marshmallows and the almonds? I did get a sweet flavor. I'm not trying to say that I, I picked up on those exact two hints, but I'm like, uh, I just, I definitely. My opinion is that the taste is a little bit more of like a shot. It's got more sugar content, I feel. It's very soft. It is. That is the other Hello. thing. Yeah. Doesn't, uh, cause it's a marshmallow. Yeah. Well. I still got another ship in there. I'm getting a lot of earache medicine. Earache medicine. I'm kidding. <laughs> Can I just say that if y'all want to go out and buy both of these things, it's going to be kind of a hassle. Neither one of these are easy to come by. Uh, one of them is hard to find. It is widely distributed, but very hard to find in the birthday bourbon. And this one is only purchasable at the, the Woodford Distillery. So it's a little difficult to come by, but if you ever get a chance to, I'm saying that Woodford Bottled and Bond is something to pick up. Excellent. Um, well, uh, I actually wanted to throw this out there as, the, as, as we wrap up here. So, do you have, you don't have social media any further, correct? I don't. Okay. Is there anybody or anything that you want to tell the people just in case they want to follow you and keep in touch? I mean, some, some form of fashion. Yes. I think it's very important that if you ever want to see me again, and I mean this in a ransom video style, you need to follow the Macho Bro Chalk Show. Because <laughs> this is the only place I'm going to appear. <laughs> so the Macho Bro Chalk Show, uh, you're obviously here. Please uh, like the video if you like it. Comment below with anything that you that you liked, even that you didn't like. Hey man, as long as you're responding, we're both happy. Yeah. Um, share to your friends that you know enjoy the kind of things that we're uh, we're talking about. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, subscribe if you get a chance. I'm gonna put a link uh, below, and please uh, let me know uh, your feedback. 
Thank you so much. And uh, this is the Macho Bracacho and Jordan. The one and only. It's Jordan know, like, like Prince, just one name. <laughs> or like Sting. He's the J man. Yeah. Is it the, that's their view. The J. Is that Hulk? it? I think so. Yeah, so it looks like it's backwards J from my perspective. J, double J, Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank y'all so much, and I will see y'all next time. Yeah.